anytime I address a group of cops, I make this statement. Individually, you know a lot. Collectively, this group knows just about everything. You know, and uh, we are hesitant to ask because asking a question is a sign of being stupid, a sign of being weak. No, it's not. It's a sign of being smart. San Diego, now one emergency. Oh, you need to come right away. There's a man with a gun and it's loaded. Oh, 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 oh. Receiving emergency signal from people. Four charge, 1141. We've got a white team out there. We need paramedics to close right now. All available units will code that way. Welcome to season one, where the theme is Tactical TLC, training, leadership, and communication. If you haven't listened to episodes two and three, well, episode two, Gordon talked about training. Episode three, he talked about leadership. Please be sure to listen to those episodes. They're short, sweet, to the point. And also, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons as well as leave a comment about what things Gordon has said that stand out to you. Now, at the beginning of, of episodes two and three, I gave a lot more information on Gordon Graham, his training programs, and the really amazing awards that he's received. Now, anticipating that you're going to listen to those episodes, here's just a few things about Gordon that you should know. Risk management, it's not just the class that he teaches. It's a way of life for him, and it, and it has been for decades. He has a huge commitment to safety for first responders. So check out firefightercloscalls.com and Lexipol, L-E-X-I-P-O-L dot com. Both of these websites, uh, the URLs, the links will be in the show notes. And, and these websites really highlight the talents and the dedication that Gordon Graham lives each and every day. Now, I'm proud to call Gordon my hero, my mentor, and my friend. And so here he is, Gordon Graham, and his views on communication. Gordon, what do you see as the challenges that are being faced by public safety, fire, EMS, law enforcement, in the areas of communication, and what ideas do you have to improve in that area? The two concerns I have are silos and the dangers of silos, and number two, institutional knowledge, and why are we are not tapping into this massive bank of institutional knowledge that we have. Mm. So let's start with silos. What do we learn after September 11th? You know, the CIA knew this, ATF knew this, the FBI knew this, the DEA knew this, uh, another federal agency knew this, but nobody was comparing notes because knowledge is power. I'm going to hold on to that. And one of the big goals after September 11th was to try to break down the silos. And in talking to my federal counterparts, and I know many of them, nothing's changed. Nothing's mm -hmm. changed. Knowledge is power. We're going to hold on to it. We've got to figure out a way to break down the silos. There was a sergeant in my office, you know, just, and I, you know, be very, very blunt. The captain would hand out things for sergeants to read. That sergeant would hold on to it and not pass it on to any other sergeant. So that that sergeant was the only person who knew what the captain wanted. You know, I've got the knowledge, therefore I've got the power, you know, and these silos, we're going to hold on to this. We're not going to share it. We're going to get the credit for this. That, that's just the kiss of death in an organization. We've yeah. got to figure out a way to break down the silos. Number two, the institutional knowledge. Anytime I address a group of cops, I make this statement. Individually, you know a lot. Collectively, this group knows just about everything. You know, And uh, we are hesitant to ask because asking a question is a sign of being stupid, a sign of being weak. No, it's not. It's a sign of being smart. What's stupid is doing something when you had the time to ask the question and you failed to ask the question. As I often say in my classes, there's two types of events, no time to think and time to think. Non-discretionary time, discretionary time. On the ones that give us no time to think, those require the constant ongoing training that we talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. On the ones that give us time to think, think, slow down, slow down. Two great books I've read, Blink by Gladwell. The brain gives you the unique ability to look at something and make a split second decision. Shortly after I read Blink, I read a great book by Dr. Michael Legault called Think. And essentially what he says is, I agree with Gladwell. The brain gives you the unique ability to make split second decisions. Why do it if you don't have to? If you have time to think, use it. Find the person who's got the knowledge. You know, collectively, this group knows everything. Ask. That's not a sign of being stupid. Well, I don't want to ask. I don't want people to think I'm weak. No, you're not being weak. You're being smart. 
You know, share that knowledge with somebody else. Maybe you've never handled this type of domestic violence call. You know, you've got people separated. You've got them hooked up. There's time to think before you start doing other things. Slow down. You got a barricaded suspect. Slow down. You don't have to act. How's the best way to handle this thing? Think and tap into this institutional knowledge. And there's so many different things that I have in my head regarding how we can share this institutional knowledge. You know, the best of the best. You know, identify the women and men who are the 10 percenters, not the 10 percent who don't care, not the 10 percent who, well, I'll do what I'm told to do. But the 10% that we have identified earlier as the leaders, the people who really care, who really want to make a difference, let's identify them in every job description. Yeah. You know, know who they are. And before they separate from the organization retirement, let's capture what they know. Mary, John, you know, you've done patrol work. You've done jail work. You were a supervisor for three years. In this last year, would you place to consider the three most important things you did on patrol operations and jail operations as a supervisor? how you handled the task that night, that day, and now that you've had time to think it through, how would you do it better next time? How would you do it better next time? Capture that before they leave. And every time we start a training class, let's put in one of these two minute little vignettes on, hey, my name's Mary Smith, and I'm separated from San Diego Sheriff's Office. I did 10 years in patrol, I did six years in the jail as a supervisor, and I did three years in investigations. And I've been asked to share some things with you. Let me tell you the most important thing I learned on patrol. And, you know, one day we came on this naked guy that was acting crazy. And at the time I did this, this, and this. But in retrospect, it would have been a lot smarter if I would have done this, this, and this. And that's my little hint to help you improve your operations. If we had all the smart people in law enforcement doing this, you know, man, we could improve the quality of our profession. We're throwing away too much institutional knowledge. Yeah, and you just, uh, corporate, in the corporate world, a lot of companies do exit interviews when they have an employee who's leaving to, to, to go to another company or maybe even change careers, whatever they're doing, they're leaving the company. They almost always have an exit interview. And ultimately that's what you're talking about doing. And sometimes an, an officer or firefighter or medic leaves without much notice you know, hey, I'm suddenly retiring or they've been out on medical industrial leave and all of a sudden they're, they're retiring out of that and you might not have an opportunity to capture that institutional knowledge as you called it. But for the most part, people know when they're going to retire and to be able to, to do that would be hugely valuable. I know, I know even as a senior officer, I would love to listen to, you know, I, 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 one of the guys that I used to work with Literally today was his last day. Uh, he retired after 28 years. I'm, I'm not quite retired yet. I would still, even though I don't have much longer before I retire, I would still love to hear what Jeff had to say because I know that guy has a lot of experience. He remained a police officer his entire career. He never promoted, never promoted to detective or sergeant or anything else. But he's got so much street cred, it's crazy. And I would love to his hear his pearls of wisdom. I don't care if I have three days left on the department. That's three days worth of knowledge from him that I can put into action or at least take into consideration. So I have friends on the bureau who told me about FBI agents who retired on September, on September 7th, 2001, Friday, September 7th, four days later, September 11th happens. They went back to headquarters, back to their FBI building, and said, how can I help? I'm sorry, you don't have a clearance. Excuse me, they've, been, they've got all this institutional knowledge and you don't wanna to listen to them. You know, I had a sergeant, greatest sergeant in the history of the CHP. The guy leaves, when's the, the guy retires. He gave plenty of notice, he retires. When's the next time the CHP has contact with him? Funeral? All that institutional knowledge is out there. I have a whole hour I talk about on bringing back the best of the best. Bring them back to help train, mentor, and develop the newest generation of supervisors, the newest generation. Well, Gordon, technology's changed. Uh, the laws have changed. The basic principles of supervision are forever in time. And this person has nailed it. They've got the memory markers. They got the behavioral scripts. They got the mental models. They got the experience. And we don't even listen to what these people have to say. Yeah. Now, some agencies, uh, 
San Diego PD as an example, and I know San Diego Sheriff does the same thing. They bring them back as uh, what they call retired annuitants. So these retired officers, lieutenants, sergeants, you know what a lot of them are doing is they're, uh, they're uh, processing background applicants, which is good in the sense that they have some input into who we're hiring and helping screen them with their knowledge, but there's a lot of their knowledge in other areas that's not being tapped. Yep. And, and they could be, they're being paid to come in back to the department. They want to be part of yep. the family and, and uh, the city is welcoming them back or the county is welcoming them back. Uh, I think that's, a, I think that's a, an amazing idea. So again, I, I always look for a takeaway for, for every block. And for this communication block is being able to take that institutional knowledge of the people that have it and find a way to communicate it to the people that need it. You're listening to this Tactical TLC podcast for exactly that reason. You're watching these videos on, on YouTube or on Facebook for exactly that reason. Because people like Gordon have the knowledge that you want. So I, I would say that very easily, and then we're not even done talking yet about communication, but Obviously, this is a great takeaway already where you can go to your agency. I don't care whether you're a fire department, EMS, law enforcement agency, and start figuring out a way where you could do at least exit interviews or people who are retired annuitants, people who are coming back to work after they're retired and they're working a certain number of years and being able to capture their knowledge, even in just a one or two minutes. Now, now Gordon, you do, um, you do the Lexapol weekly tip, you know, your tip of the week, which I absolutely love those. They're simple, short, easily digestible, quick. It is literally, a, I see the email command. I'm like, oh, what's Gordon have to say today? And uh, it, it, I almost picture a format like that. It's certainly. Why not? Why not? You know, uh, I don't have all the knowledge. I'm trying to share what I know, but I know that collectively, the group that I'm talking to knows a lot more than I'll ever know. Yeah. Let's capture that knowledge and share with others. You know, I've had a law practice now for 36 years. There's a million cops in this country, round figures. There's a million firefighters in this country, round figures. Who do you think shows up in my law office more frequently? Cops or firefighters? I'm equally popular in both worlds. Who shows up more frequently? Cops, 50 to one. Why? Firefighters learn collectively. Everything they do, they do as a team. Cops, we learn individually. We pick up something on this domestic violence call. Wow, I didn't know that. We pick up something on this traffic collision where the tow truck driver is pulling the vehicle up the side of the hill and the cable snaps and it whips around and it rips the mirror off the tow truck and the cop's standing on the other side and says, whoa, I learned something. Where do they go next? They go to their next call. They go to their next call. For the supervisor who's watching this, why don't you spend some time at the end of the ship? Remember what we call briefing, debriefing? Mm -hmm. We brief at the start of the shift. Why don't we debrief at the end of the shift? Mary, did you learn anything today? You had that domestic violence call up there. What did you learn? Tom, what did you learn on that traffic collision? Did you pick up anything? If they say no, then it's no. You know, occasionally, you know what I did learn? I learned this, this, and this. Share with the group. And, and, you know, the, and the big takeaway that I want people to know is slow down. Not everything needs to be done now. Most things give you time to think. If you have it, use it. I am very, very familiar with a, a case involving a small department outside of uh, Denver, Colorado. And they did a phenomenal job, Greenwood Village, Colorado, a phenomenal job. And there was a lawsuit that came out of it, a federal lawsuit. And the judge looked at the thinking process of the involved people. And the judge said, how can you possibly say they were reckless? They considered everything. They did this, they did this, they did this. And the judge listed over this 18 hour event, exactly what the cops did to try to preserve life, you know, mm -hmm. and every step they took in terms of his demands and bringing in the girlfriend and bringing in the ex-wife and let him talk to his mom and, and letting him have some food and let him have this and not shutting down. And the federal court judge, a uh, very well reasoned decision said, and you want me to say this was reckless behavior? You know, we, you know, we need to think slow down and think things through, be deliberative. You know, I, I watch SWAT cops, SWAT cops. Do they want to speed things up or slow things down? Their whole mission is let's slow it down and, and anything we can to avoid using deadly force, we'll use any option. That's the last resort. 
contrary to everything you see on TV about SWAT cops and we're, you know, we're going to be doing this and we're, no, no, no. The real good ones, and I know a lot of them, how, how can we slow this thing down? Maybe something else will happen when we slow down because we don't want to have to do this. Yeah, excellent, excellent points and, and excellent takeaways as well. I, uh, I really like that. I, just, I just love the wisdom that you have and how you share it. So thank you for that. So let me ask you this. I, I know that people, people in the fire world, people in the EMS and law enforcement world, most of them know you as they well should. But for anybody who doesn't happen to know who Gordon Graham is, why don't you tell us how they can learn more about you, how, how they can follow you, how they can get your tip of the week? Maybe oh, as one example. The way is uh, lexipol.com, L-E-X-I-P-O-L.com. I, uh, along with Bruce Prayett, had an idea 20 years ago to standardize policies, procedures, and training in California law enforcement. And today I'm happy to say that better than two-thirds of the states today have the Lexable Knowledge Management System, two basic principles of risk management, standardize your best practices, back it up with constant ongoing training. And when you access lexable.com, You've got my tips of the day there. They're free. There's no charge. You don't have to be a member to do this. Uh, drag down to presentations, drag down to webinars. I've got some of the best and brightest people in American law enforcement today on these webinars, and they're all yours for free. My goal is improving the quality of our profession, where excellence is the norm, not the deviation. We've got to get better and better and better at what we do. And remember, the overall goal for all of us in public safety is preservation of life. And at the end of your career, you'll be able to say, you know what? I did good. I did good. And that's what I'm looking for. Well, you certainly, you certainly put things in place that allow that to happen. And, and the, what's needed now is for people to take advantage of that, the things that you've put into place. People need to implement those things. They need to adopt those principles. So as you're listening to this show, uh, whether it's a podcast or watching it on a video, Check out Gordon Graham. If you haven't heard about him, you need to soak in his wisdom because he takes the far side of complexity and makes it simple. Makes it simple to understand, simple to retain, simple to implement. And I, I tell you what, uh, Gordon Graham has gold and it's a lot of it is out there for free. And if you're a training coordinator, get a hold of him and get him out to your agency because he's not going to be around forever. And eventually, at some point, he's going to want to take a long vacation with his beautiful wife. And I can tell you, having met his wife, he's, he's a smart man to spend time with her. So uh, I, I want to thank you again, Gordon, for being here, honoring us with your time, honoring us with your wisdom. And I just thank you. You're very kind, Carrie. And one last thought. Earlier in the program, I talked about the 10-80-10. The 10% of people who will do what they're told to do, the 80% who are good people, and then there's 10% who really want to make a difference. The women and men who are watching this today on their own time, on their own dime, the women and men who will follow up and listen to TLC and practice this stuff and change the way behavior, that's the 10% that are going to change the, the future of American law enforcement. And we've got to do that. I, I agree with you completely. And, and uh, thank you for that. Any, uh, any other last bits of wisdom before we uh, bring this podcast to a close? Yes, just one last thought. Without the public trust, we have nothing. Mm -hmm. And nationally, there's a lot of questions about public trust in law enforcement. I think the minority of people who don't like us is being heard more clearly than the majority of people who do like us. But every contact we make is an opportunity to let the public know how good we are at what we do and why we do everything at the highest levels of ethics and integrity. And if we have anybody in the organization that's not practicing that, then maybe they're on the wrong line of work. And as leaders in this organization, we need to address them, address them proactively. I completely agree with you on that. And the, I've always said that, you know, the, the patrol, the patrol officers and the, and the firefighters and the medics are out there. You're in the same position with, with having to always keep that public trust. It's not just a law enforcement issue. It's a public safety issue. And every contact that you have with people, with the public, you're going to be the topic of dinner table conversation. Not the chief of police, not the chief of the fire department, not the head of the AMS unit. You and how you treat the public is so critical. 
and making sure that you make really good decisions and treat people well. Yep. So. And, and one group that gets omitted all too often. I had a woman come up to me yesterday with a smile on her face. So I knew that she was going to say something smart. She said, I'm just a dispatcher. I'm just a dispatcher. And, and she said it because I, I have practiced this. I'm so fed up with that. That's the first point of contact. And all too often, we treat them as second-class citizens. You know, that's the first point of contact that our public has. 911, what's the nature of your emergency? They're setting the tone for the rest of this. They're the women and men who are, they can make or break the entire incident. One favor I ask of all the people out in the street, close the loop with your dispatchers. Close the loop. When the call is finished, give them a call and let them know how it ended up. That's the, the big thing. And, I, I, you know, I don't want to bore you with this. When I was a kid, I, I was in the San Francisco Boys Chorus as a kid. And my lead singing instructor was a woman they called Mady Bacon. And she was from New York, lived in an apartment. She, you know, like everybody in New York lives in an apartment. And she says, if you ever want to drive your neighbors nuts, sing a song and don't finish it. <laughs> sing a song and don't finish it. Get right to the last line and don't finish it. It'll drive people nuts. And that's where dispatchers are. They do this. How did it end up? Close the loop with them, please, and thank them for their good work day in and day out. You know, excellent point. And uh, that, that's easy to overlook as you rush off to the next call. But uh, the consideration that you show is I, I, I've done that before with uh, dispatchers, and, and they love getting the love because they don't get a lot of it. So, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Thank you for that. And so as we close out this uh, episode of the Tactical TLC Training Leadership and Communication Podcast and videos, what I want to leave you with is this. Uh, we've, we've talked a lot about training, leadership, and communication. We have a lot of takeaways from all three. Look in the show notes for that. Check out our next episode and do unto others before they think about doing unto you. Thanks for listening to the Tomorrow's Police Officer Podcast. This episode of Season 1 Tactical TLC was all about communication. Be sure to look for the two episodes that came prior to this, the first one on training, the other one on leadership. New episodes come out every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 6 a.m. Pacific. To listen to the other episodes, simply go to our website, tomorrowspoliceofficer.com forward slash podcast. There, you'll not only find a complete library of all of our episodes, you'll also find show notes, links, our guest biographies, as well as contact information for our guests so you can learn more about them and from them. If you or someone you know is interested in a law enforcement career, be sure to check out the Get Hired Academy, where you'll be able to learn everything you need to become a law enforcement officer. We cover everything from preparing for the written exam, take you through all of the interviews and all the other testing that you'll do during the background investigation process, and get you fully prepared for the final interview to get you hired. I've coached hundreds of people through the hiring process, and I don't want you to say or do something that will end your career before it even begins. Look, we need great cops, and I can help you get hired. Now, whether at work or at home, if you've ever had someone get mad at you, even when you've had the best of intentions, for some reason they didn't trust you, they didn't believe you, they were upset with you, or maybe you were the one that had the misunderstanding, there's a lot of help available on our website. The reality is first responders have tons of extra stress on their relationships, both at work and at home. And it seems like every time you turn around, there's a new load being put on your shoulders. You can quickly find what you need at the tomorrowspoliceofficer.com website. Communication skills, new and innovative de-escalation training, leadership and relationships are our areas of specialty. So check out tomorrowspoliceofficer.com and you'll find what you're looking for. Until next time. Please stay safe.